Hey guys, this is Mike from the SEO Pub, and just wanted to do a short video. Um, one question I get a lot from people who uh, want to do SEO, and specifically local SEO, is how do you find keywords for local SEO? And in my mind, local SEO is a lot different than regular SEO, uh, when, especially when it comes to picking keywords. You're going to be looking, in, in most local markets, you're going to be looking for stuff that has a lot less volume than you're going to find um, in a lot of IM kind of niches or, or businesses that are nationwide. Um, and I really do not spend any time at all analyzing the competitiveness of those keywords. It's a little different than what internet marketers are used to where they're, they're looking for, oftentimes looking for the low-hanging fruit, these long-tail keywords that they can rank for easily and quickly. When you're doing local SEO for a business, though, you need to figure out where their market is, what people are searching for, and if it's when you find terms that people are searching for that relate to their business, it's your job as their SEO to get them ranked for those terms. Because if they're not finding your client, they're finding your client's competitors instead, and you don't want that. So I don't really spend much time analyzing the competition at all, other than to see what I might have to do to outrank them. Um, I analyze them to see what kind of links they have, you know, what, what links do they have that I can get for my client as well, but I don't analyze them to determine whether or not I'm going to pick the keyword. If there's search volume there, I'm picking the keyword. It's as simple as that. Now, one thing I use, uh, a tool that I want to show you, uh, it's an online tool that makes finding keywords, it just, it's, this is a huge time saver. Um, not necessarily finding keywords, but instead of having to do a lot of typing of 8 billion different keywords, I, I use this tool. And let's just take an example. Let's say I'm, I'm working, um, this, by the way, this is my first time using the Google Hangouts. I'm just kind of testing this to see how it goes. I don't know how clear the video is going to be, so I'm going to write some stuff down in a, a Word document here so that in large type so that you can see it because I don't think you're going to be able to see the URLs and some of the other stuff I'm using here. But anyhow, um, Let's say I have a client in my, my hometown here is York, Pennsylvania. Um, let's say it's a real estate agent, for example. So I'm going to come up with a list of keywords that relate to their business. And what I'm going to do then, I'm going to go to this online tool that I use, which you can find at 5minutesite.com forward slash local underscore keywords.php. So I'm going to type that out so you can see it on your screen, hopefully a little better. It's 5minutesite.com forward slash local underscore keywords.php. And I can probably even make that a little bit bigger. I'll we'll just go with that. So hopefully you can see that. Again, it's five the number five minute site dot com <clears throat> forward slash local underscore keywords dot php. And what that page it's a really simple looking page, but this saves me a ton of time. So the next thing I'm gonna do though, I'm gonna pick out keywords, like I said, that relate to my client's business. So if this is a real estate agent, some things that people might be searching for that this client is going to be interested in. Um, we'll say homes for sale. I also will then use homes for sale in, just I-N, and stop there. And I'm going to show you why in a minute. Uh, house, houses for sale. Houses for sale in. Real estate. Real estate in real estate agent real estate agents and then real estate in or sorry real estate agent in real estate agents in okay so I got uh, let's see four five six eight, ten keywords here I would probably come up with a list of, I don't know, 20, 30. I'd sit here and just brainstorm for an hour thinking of different kind of phrases that people might use. So I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to go over to my little keyword tool here. 
And at the very top, if you can't read this, it says US zip code. So you're going to enter in the zip code of your client. Now this is York PA. I know the zip code is 17403. There's a bunch of zip codes. But we're going to use 17403. And then you can pick a radius up to 100 miles from your client. So depending on the area that your client serves, this can be pretty useful. I'm going to try and keep my results low um, just for this video. So I'm just going to pick two miles. However, or actually I'll go with five. Um, depending on the client, I might pick 20 miles, 30 miles. And, and this is a conversation you need to have with your client beforehand to understand where their market is, where they pull clients from, you know, if it's, if it's a medical practice, how far away are they getting clients from, that kind of stuff you need to know. Um, and so that you know what towns to target. What this is going to do though, whatever zip code you put in, you pick a radius of however many miles up to 100 miles and it's going to pull all the towns and zip codes if you want in that radius. Now some of the options here, if you can't read this, it says include cities in results. I always check that. Include cities plus state abbreviations in results. I also want that. So what that would mean is um, like one of my keywords here was homes for sale. I want homes for sale York. I want homes for sale York PA. Some people may use both of those and that's what that option is that includes cities plus state names in results uh, or state abbreviations in results. I also check the box that says include cities plus state names in results. So that would be home um, homes for sale York, Pennsylvania. Some people might type that rather than York PA. You can also include zip codes and results. So that would be homes for sale 17402, 17403, all the area zip codes. I'm going to leave that out right now. Um, I, I've seen mixed results personally with that. I don't see that many searches happening with zip codes very often when I check this, but you can certainly take a look at that. And here's why I use that word in on some of the keywords. It's going to give me some useless results. But the, the uh, fifth option down here is include, and it says in quotes, location keyword and keyword location and results. I check that. What that's going to do is it's going to pick these all these towns. Let's say um, a town nearby would be Red Lion in, in my, my town here. So Red Lion PA. So what it's going to do, it's going to search for Red Lion PA homes for sale. It's also going to pull up for me homes for sale Red Lion PA. And that's why I do this in. I want homes for sale in Red Lion PA. It's also going to do Red Lion PA homes for sale in, which is a useless keyword and isn't going to give me any results. But it, there, unfortunately, there's no way around that in, unless you run separate searches. Um, but I don't, I don't spend the time doing that. So um, it says include all USA state names in locations and include all USA state abbreviations and locations. I don't do that. What that does is it puts the state name in every single search result or keyword that it generates, not search result, keyword that it generates. I, I don't want that in every single one because sometimes people search for homes for sale in York. They also search for homes for sale in York PA. So I want both variations in there. Um, and of course, when you're doing keyword research, you also have to be aware of the town. I live in York. Pennsylvania here in the United States. There's a fairly decent sized town well known York in England. So oftentimes I have to be careful and I have to take a look a little harder at some of the search results, what people are searching for and the search numbers, you know, are people really searching in York PA or are these searches that relate more to York in England? But that's, that's a, another conversation. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to take these keywords and we're going to copy and paste. So I'm going to copy them and here's the box that says enter one keyword or phrase per line. So I put all my keywords in there and you have the option of removing cities by entering one city per line. So if there's a town that your client specifically does not want to target for some reason, you can put it there. Same with zip codes. If you have any zip codes that you don't want to target, I've never used that. I've never run into that, but I, I suppose there's some business that, that may be useful for some reason. And right here, I just go down and hit the submit button.
Now when it's done, you scroll down and it's generated all these different versions of your search term for towns in the radius that you gave it. So you don't have to sit here constantly typing out all these stupid uh, possible keywords. In this case, it uh, output 240. Usually I, I do a, a lot more extensive search and I also do a, a wider radius. I usually end up with anywhere from like 10,000 to 15,000 versions of keywords. But I wanted to keep it small for this video. So what I'm going to do now, it's really simple. Oops. We're going to copy all these different possible keywords. And I'm going to go over into the Google Keyword Tool that you're all familiar with, I'm sure. I'm going to paste these results. And I want to look for exact searches. Get rid of the broad. Hit the search button. All right, and then I want local searches. Depending on your client, you might want global, but for this one, I want local searches. And here it gives me a keyword list. So, for example, homes for sale in York, PA is getting 720 searches a month. Houses for sale in York, PA, 390 searches. Homes for sale, York, PA, 260 searches. I'm taking all of these down, even... Houses for sale in Dallas Town only gets 16 searches. York Houses for sale, 12. Depending on the client's budget and how many keywords you know we're going to target and how many other higher volume keywords I find, I may take keywords with this lower search volume. It's a little different when you do local SEO. Um, so I'm going to pull all these keywords, <clears throat> dig into them a little bit, see who the competitors are. Um, but that's, that's pretty much how I, I get a list of keywords together. And because of this 5minutesite.com uh, little application, it saves me so much time from typing in all these different variations of keywords. And I have them right here. I plug them into Google. And most of them are going to end up with zero searches. I'm just going to trash those. That's fine. But I'm looking for the ones that have some search volume. Again, I don't analyze competition to pick keywords. Um, the only exception to that would be if you had a client who was trying to target like restaurants in New York City. Uh, that's a really competitive keyword. I'm probably going to analyze that a little bit more for my pricing versus whether or not I'm going to pick the keyword because I know it's going to take a lot of work and I really need to dig in and see how much work it's going to take to rank a client for those for keywords relating to restaurants in New York City or real estate in New York City, attorneys in New York. Um, attorneys in Manhattan, stuff like that is, is really competitive. People dump a lot of money into those keywords. But in most towns, most mo markets for local SEO, I'm not really concerned with picking, I, I, actually I shouldn't say I'm not really, I'm not concerned at all with picking easy keywords. I'll take those too. But even keywords that maybe are a little bit more challenging, I'm taking those for my client. It's my job to get them ranked there. So I'm not analyzing competition. I'm not, or what I should say is I'm not eliminating keywords based on the competition. I know a lot of internet marketers like to do that when they're picking keywords for a niche. I don't do that at all. For local SEO, I'm, I'm not eliminating keywords. I, it's my job to get the client ranked there. So I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you have any questions, post a comment. Let me know. Email me. You can always get a hold of me. But that's, that's pretty much what I do to get started for keyword research and picking keywords for a client for local SEO.